Alright guys, today we're looking at Cooler Master's new Hyper 212 Black, the latest revision of the 212 with their newest Sickle Flow Edge fan. Now this has got to be the millionth revision of this cooler at this time, but let's take a look and see how it does. First, let's get started by taking a look at the inner contents. Each of the main parts of the cooler are separated and protected by its own cardboard, um, the fan, the heat sink, and the accessories. It's packaged in a box just big enough to hold the contents of the cooler. Let's take a look at the fan that comes with this cooler, Cooler Master's latest Sickle Flow Edge 120 millimeter fan. This fan includes your standard rubber anti-vibration tips. It's got seven blades. Uh, the main interesting things about this fan are that it's been optimized for higher static pressure levels and low noise levels and it also includes auto start slash stop so when your fan really isn't needed it just turns itself off. Now in addition to the basic mounting gear included with the cooler they also include a second pair of fan clips so if you have an extra fan you can add it to the cooler to give it a little extra cooling power. On the top of the heat sink here, there is a aluminum cover. I'm not sure if it really does anything, but it makes it look a little nicer. And here we have the heat pipes of the cooler. You have four direct touch copper heat pipes, which move away the heat from the CPU into the radiator. The installation of this cooler was pretty darn simple. As with all Intel systems, you start by applying the motherboard backplate against the motherboard. Once that's complete, you just take the heat sink, uh, press it against the back plate, and screw it in. Although, keep in mind, since this cooler doesn't have any standoffs, you'll need to use one hand to keep the back plate secure while you're installing this cooler. Now, this quick shot here is to show you the RAM compatibility. These sticks are about 46 millimeters tall, and as you see, the fan is not interfering with them at all. This means you can use RAM no matter how tall with this cooler. You don't have to worry about any sort of compatibility problems. And all right, let's get to the benchmark. So the first one we have is our maximum intensity workload where we just see exactly how much the cooler can handle. Now, in our best scenarios, you'll see about 240 watts pushed on this CPU. With Cooler Master's Hyper 212 Black, it was able to handle about 212 watts during the course of testing. Equally important as peak performance is peak noise levels, and with the noise levels recorded of 42.4 dBA, this is one of the quieter results I've seen in testing. Now a lot of folks out there are, insist on noise normalized testing, and what that means is you set all the coolers to run at the same noise levels. Now for this we set them to 38.2 dBA, which is a very low noise levels, but still slightly audible. Um, in this test, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black did all right with 199 watts cooled during the course of testing, which basically means you can do any common tasks without needing to run the fans loudly. Now the next set of tests is with a 175 watt power consumption on the CPU. And here Cooler Masters does okay with 60 degrees over ambient, but it is near the end of our results. However, it does outperform Sky's Kotetsu Mark III and Thermal Wright's Silver Soul 135. Noise results are about the same here because the CPU reaches 87 degrees, which is near its maximum temperature. Our last set of tests are run with 125 watts flowing through the CPU, and this is a really easy test that even Intel stock cooler can handle with ease. Now the thermal results here are about as expected. With 45 degrees over ambient, it's about equal to Cougar's Forza 135 and just a little bit behind Decool's AK series coolers. The noise levels here are really impressive. At 37.3 dBA, this recording is actually the same as when my system is running at idle. That means the cooler is running quieter than my system fans, and it also means that in most workloads, most people won't ever hear the sound of the fans.
If you're interested in seeing more content like this, most of my cooler reviews are available in text format at Tom's Hardware and Boring Text Reviews. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. Until next time.